Good morning and welcome. Today is the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Mass is being offered for the people of the parish. Our presider is Father Suski. Please stand. Today is the 33rd Sunday of Ordinary Time, and we begin our prayers in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You were seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full of lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, 
has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert 
and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plan and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant, so you knew that I harvest where I did not plan and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. To everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, as we know, the readings that we hear at Mass are selected deliberately by the Church, and they're selected to tell a story that begins in Advent and concludes around this time of year leading up to Advent. As we come to the end of the calendar year, we are coming to the end of the liturgical year of the church. Of course, the final Sunday of ordinary time is the Sunday Christ the King. But today, we're getting to the end. 
of the church's liturgical year. And so the readings we hear last week, this week, are focused on the end times, on serious messages from Jesus about the end, about judgment, about what really matters, about heaven and hell. Last week we heard about the wise virgins who had their lamps and kept them burning. They had extra oil. They were diligent in keeping the flame alive so that when the bridegroom returned at a time they didn't know, they were ready for him and went into the wedding feast. And the foolish ones who didn't prepare and the lamps went out and were barred entrance to the wedding feast, which of course represents heaven. The message, of course, then was that we have to keep the flame of faith alive and we have, to, we have to receive and sustain the gifts that God gives us, the gifts of his grace, the gifts of faith, the gifts of his mercy. Well, today Jesus looks at it from a different angle when he tells this parable about the servants, each of whom were given talents to use. The message was not simply to keep those talents, but to use them. To use them in God's service so that they bear fruit for the Lord. We know the story of the the man with the five talents earns five more. The one with two earns two more. They weren't all given the same amount because their abilities were not the same. God distributes his gifts as he wills. Not everyone has the same gifts as everyone else. But the message is clear. We are called to use whatever God has given to us in his service. And the Lord rewards the man who earns five the same as he rewarded the man who earned two because they both worked with what they had. They did the best with what they were given. And they both receive the same reward. Come and share your master's joy. What's what's wrong with the third one, though? It wasn't that he was not given the same. He was given only one talent, true. But it's reasonable to presume that if he had used that one talent as the others did and doubled it as they did, he would have received a reward. But instead, he buries it. Why? There's a lot to be learned in the responses of these servants to the master. The first two responded by saying, you gave me five talents, or you gave me two talents. See, I used them, and now you have twice as much. The recognition that the talents had come from God had motivated them to use them in his service. The recognition that the talents had come from him motivated them to grateful service. And it wasn't just their efforts that doubled it. When God is the master, his efforts double the produce of our efforts. But what's with the last man, the last servant? He says, I knew you were a demanding person. He's not grateful. He's afraid. He knows that the the talent came from the master, but he didn't love the master. He just feared the master and almost blaming the master. Because you were so demanding, I was afraid of you, and I didn't work with your money. I just buried it. He didn't really, he wasn't really grateful. So the key is we need to recognize the gifts that God has given to each one of us. And it is each one of us. We say, okay, my life circumstances, I don't have any gifts. I don't have any physical abilities. I don't have any money. The reality is all of us have gifts. Whatever our physical condition, we have time, time to pray kind to be kind to whoever we are in contact with, kind to serve with whatever gifts we have been given in time, talent, or treasure, as they say. And like the master in the parable, we are not called to give 
what we don't have. We are called to use whatever we have, however little it may seem to us, in the service of our Lord, motivated by gratitude, and allow him to produce fruit through it. We stand together now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead life of the world to come. Amen. In order to be the best that we can be, we need the grace of God, and so we turn to him in prayer. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father and all the clergy, may they remain strong in mind and body in order to carry the good news to all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all elected government officials, may their leadership help bring peace to the world and justice to those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For each of us, that we may recognize our talents and strive to use them in ways that give glory and praise to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those adults in ministry with the youth of our parish, may they be enlightened with wisdom, counseled with right judgment, and inspired with fortitude by the Holy Spirit to bring Christ's love through their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the sick, may they be blessed with the assistance they need to endure their hardships. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, especially members of the families of Our Lady of Good Counsel Parish, and all the souls in purgatory, may they rest forever in the joys of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for all the gifts you have given us, especially gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear and answer to these petitions we offer in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we offer in the sight what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Our Lady of Good Counsel, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, his auxiliary bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, who all were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace, unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul. invite you, the following at home, to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity 
Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. In our prayer to St. Michael, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Sir. 